Hello. How are you? Stephen Hawking's toneless computer-generated voice has become his trademark. This is how I speak. What it might lack in flair, it makes up for in design. In 2005, Professor Hawking's paralysis meant he could no longer use this handheld device that he'd used for decades to operate his computer. So a new solution had to be created. Definitely my favorite project is um, an infrared switch that I've mounted on uh, Stephen's glasses. He operates it with tiny movements of his cheek. It's a bit like shining a torch at a wall. The closer the wall is, the brighter the spot you'll see made by the torch. So the device actually has an infrared LED next to an infrared detector. And when Stephen tenses a cheek muscle, that moves his skin slightly closer to the sensor and it can detect very small movements in his cheek. The next part of that is that there is a, an electronic circuit that detects how much he's moving his cheek and it detects these little movements and turns them into pulses that go to a computer. While this technology is cutting edge, some other parts of it are, shall we say, retro. Stephen still uses a menu system that he used to use in 1986. It is this program that originally was DOS-based and it's been ported to work on newer computers. What we're seeing here is a big screen full of words and Stephen can select uh, one word at a time using a few pulses to narrow down the highlighted section. You've got yes, no, maybe, don't, no, thanks and these are the phrases that he could speak most often and you've got all sorts of short words along the bottom uh, that he speaks all the time. He has all the letters of the alphabet just here and if he clicks on B, for example, he'll get a whole screen full of words beginning with B and he has a vocabulary of about 4,000 words that he can bring up using those menus. There's one row along here which is predictive, and when I say predictive, I mean the cutting edge of 1980s technology. It's basically the last word that was spoken um, after the particular word that, that he's recently said, so it's not very clever. Fortunately, its user is clever. Despite the painstaking process of typing each word, Professor Hawking has written several books, including a series for kids that explains how the universe works. And now he and his daughter are big names in the under 12 crowd. In my own childhood was, to an extent, quite magical. We lived in this extraordinary, this funny little house with a playing in the churchyard. You could go down to the river. My father worked on the stars. And so I had this whole element of fabulous fantasy in my real childhood, and that's one of the things we tried to carry across to the book. Lucy's always leaned more towards the creative side, but really, her dabbling in science started very early. In 1970, just after I was born, uh, my father actually had his eureka moment, and he says that he was up very late after the birth of his daughter, so that would be me, and um, it came to him, this moment of inspiration. He had a eureka moment about what happens when two black holes collide. And he worked out a very, very elegant mathematical proof in which he proved that when two black holes collide, they can join to form a larger black hole, but that they cannot divide. One black hole cannot divide to become two. And so this happened just after my birth. So I like to think I was a rather inspirational baby. Her father still works on the stars and convincing him to put the biggest questions in the universe into kid-friendly writing was easy, as Professor Hawking told us himself. We wanted to write for children because they are the future. The search for life um, in the solar system and beyond, that's actually the theme of George's Cosmic Treasure Hunt, which is our latest book. And it's one of the questions that kids really do ask. It's one of the most common questions is, is there anyone else out there? And so, we wanted to look at this question and talk about it and talk about the possibility of life on other worlds, but also the possibility of taking human life out to other worlds. He's a leading expert on the universe, so we asked, does Stephen Hawking think there's life out there? We don't know if there is alien life. But if life developed on Earth, it must be possible for life to have developed elsewhere. Given that the universe is infinite, we would expect alien life to exist somewhere, but it might be a very long way from us. 
these books also, they, they are based on my father's career in science and they're based on a great and an amazing career that spanned over 40 years and the work that he would like to be remembered for is his work on black holes and the origins of the universe and so that's where we're taking everyone on the cosmic journey. Another adventure they both experienced recently was the thrill of weightlessness in NASA's zero gravity flight. It's like the first time as a child you go on a roller coaster. It's that same sensation of, oh my God, this is amazing. It's really cool. <laughs> I loved it. And we did about 15 parabolas. And at the end, we'd all turned into kids, basically. And at the end, they went, oh, I'm afraid this is your last parabola. And we're like, oh no, we want to have another go. <laughs> Can we do it again? I mean, <laughs> he just thought, by the time we got the we all had so we were all about age three, I think. So excited. It was so cool. The level of cool was more profound for her father. After 40 years in a wheelchair, Stephen Hawking was floating. We've had an extraordinary time. He's an amazing man. If you think about what he's achieved in science and then separate from what he's achieved by um, the way he's dealt with his disability, both those things are incredible. But when you actually put them together in one person, that's, I think, what makes him so extraordinary and unique. For Professor Hawking, though, there's an added element that makes it extraordinary. I think it is all of those things. I am very pleased to have made a contribution to our understanding of the universe, despite my physical difficulties. But it would have been an empty triumph without the love and support of my family. <laughs>